Hi everybody, my name is James and it is really fantastic that you've joined us today. You know, I'm really praying that in this one hour together, God is going to enter into your life in a fresh way. He's going to bless you. We, in these times, more than ever, we need the strength that only God gives. So often we lose focus on Jesus and that is it's not good for us. We're meant to be focused on him. And I'm praying that in this one hour together, God would help to refocus us, recalibrate us on Jesus. And I'm really praying for you that you would hear God's voice of love over your life once again this morning. You know those great words God the Father said over Jesus, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. God is saying that over you this morning. You are God's beloved son or daughter. He is well pleased with you. And we've got some great things coming up this morning. We've, we're going to hear some stories from people who've done the Alpha course. Um, also, Andy's interviewing some people from CCB who work in education to see what, what their job is like in these crazy times. Um, we're going to have a kid slot from Julie and then Andy's going to kick us off on our fresh new sermon series on the Gospel of Mark which is going to be really great but before that let's pray together Father we just come before you right now we just recognize how we're feeling whether we're feeling really really happy or we feel like we're struggling a little bit and we just say welcome, Father God, welcome. Come into our hearts, come into our minds, into our bodies, come and meet with us. Take us where we're at and take us on, on our journey with you. And we thank you so much that you rose Jesus Christ up from the dead, that we don't follow a dead king or just an inspiring man who lived long ago. No, we follow a living king who is alive and at work and who is living inside of us right now. Jesus, we adore you. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to come and stir us and inspire us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So let's sing this first hymn together. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, 
Let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory. Everything has Okay, I hope you've had a good week this week. I've heard some people saying that actually the past week and the past couple of weeks has actually been the toughest time of this whole pandemic, especially people with kids at home wrestling their way through the homeschooling and things like that and the weather not being great and other people were just isolated and lonely. It's really hard. Um, we've been praying for you this week. <laughs> as a church. I just want to read out this great little psalm to you this morning to help us in our worship. This is a wonderful psalm written by King David and people have, have commented that or said that he wrote this probably when he was sitting in his palace and he was looking out over the beautiful view which was hills kind of hills for as far as you could see and he was remembering all of the years that he had trouble in those hills for the years that he had to flee for his life and hide in those hills and it was a really tough 15 years or so and in those times he knew and learnt the faithfulness the goodness the kindness the mercy of God that God protected him, God strengthened him, God preserved him. And, and I want to pray that for you this morning. So let me just read out this psalm. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who sleep, who keeps Israel will neither slumber or sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Now I would love us to pray, thanking God for his amazing help and strength. Then I would love us to say sorry. Sorry for when we fail to ask for God's help, when we try and do life by ourselves. Okay, so let's pray. So we're going to do a thank you and then a sorry. Father, thank you so much that you are our dad, our Abba Father. You are our helper. You strengthen us and you want to help us. You are interested in every intricate detail of our lives. Now I just want to give you 10 seconds to thank God for all the great things he's, he's done in your life and the ways he's helped you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. But Father, we recognise that a lot of the time we try and do things in our own strength, for our own motives, for our own reasons, and we just say we're sorry. We want to return back to you once again. We want to reorientate ourselves around your kingdom, your desires, your heart. We just say we give you our lives once again. And we're so sorry for, for the times when we failed to get strength from you and when we've carried on in our own strength without spending time pursuing you, being with you. Father, we're just really sorry. I just want to give you 10 seconds or so just to say sorry to God. Mm. Father, thank you that you always promise to forgive us. And would you come and help us right now as we worship you?
Great to be with you this morning. So we are continuing our series on the life of Jesus and we are going to fast forward 18 years to when Jesus was 30 years old. Now this story today involves a dove. Woo! It involves a voice from heaven. Hello there. And it also involves lots of water. Oh my goodness. Shall we watch this short animation to find out? Down to the river the people came. It wasn't a picnic, it wasn't a game. The people came to confess their sin. Then John the Baptist said, come on in. This is the way to show you repent. So into the water the people went. A man walked up to the riverside and stepped into the flowing tide. John the Baptist was quite surprised when he looked and saw those gentle eyes. Jesus, he cried, why did you come? You've never sinned against anyone. But Jesus replied, God's will be done. So Jesus was baptised that very day to show everyone he would follow God's way. When a voice that came from heaven above said this is my son the one whom i love and the spirit of god came down like a dove
Wow, Jesus' baptism. You know, this was a really important event in Jesus' life. And it was the first time Jesus revealed who he was. It identified Jesus as God's son. From spending time with his father, Jesus had come to know the plan that God had for his life. And this was the beginning of his ministry. Jesus was setting an example by being baptised and he was showing the way and he was obeying God. You know, the dove in the story, whoa, represented the Holy Spirit. And in the story, we have all three. We have God the Father with the voice that came down from heaven. We have the Holy Spirit as the dove and we have Jesus who is being baptised in the water. Now that's really significant and it's a really good story for us to learn today. So keep focusing on God. God has a brilliant plan for your lives too. So the song we're going to sing this morning is God is Love. Hope you enjoy this. Get up on your feet. Let's do the actions and I'll see you next week.
Well, it's uh, fantastic to be able to spend a few moments with four incredible people from Christchurch Barnet. These four are teachers. And we know there is absolute mayhem going on in the classroom with so much happening and also in people's homes as we are trying to educate our children and young people. So, look, we want to hear your stories briefly and we want to hear how we can pray for you. Claire, tell us, tell us, where are you based and how are you doing? Yeah, I'm based at a local, very large primary school um, just down the bottom of the road. Um, we've got a combination of key worker and vulnerable children in school and uh, doing online remote learning as well. So lots of year groups in school and we're all in on rotors um, and yeah, just trying to get used to this new way of working. Amazing. You're a reception school, uh, reception year teacher, which sounds like madness. How do you, how are you doing? How are you coping? Um, well, it's just been a lot to organise and just really wanting the families to engage the ones who are at home and mm. try to do live teaching with those families so that we can actually see the children wow. who are at home. Um, so there's a lot of work just to get families to engage. It's, it's, it is very stressful and in terms of just the amount of work, but the yeah. team at, at my school are fantastic and very committed. Yeah, yeah, supporting parents and children as well. Excellent. And Karen, what about you? Now, where are you teaching? I'm in a, a private school, uh, not so far away. It's co-ed. And yes, we, we're open as well for, for vulnerable and key worker children. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm in five days out of a fortnight um, and I'm at home five days so today I was at home and we just had a power cut so I'm glad it didn't happen earlier could have wow. caused a bit of chaos <laughs> but um, it, we've been teaching every lesson online yeah. since the first um, lockdown and thankfully we were able to be in school in the autumn term but everything happens as normal so it's, it's quite demanding and full-on and, and the crazy thing is, you're having to do both online and also live stuff, aren't you, in, in that mixed mode thing. Yeah, how are you feeling in that? How's, that? how's that going? Just how do you, you know, do you feel a sense of like satisfaction in doing that? Um, well, yes, but you're, you're very conscious because I'm in secondary, very conscious that there are some quite anxious um, students out there. Um, they're anxious about their exams, you know, mm. what's going to happen with, with those they're um, keen to do well. They know they have to be online, but they don't really want to be. The confusion of being at home where they might have other distractions. So we, we're spending quite a bit of time as wow. teachers yeah. doing the pastoral stuff online as well. So that is it's huge. Yeah, it's just concerned about them, really. Yeah. Wow. Well done. Uh, but Gareth, now you're in a secondary school as well um, and you do PE. I mean, how do you do PE online apart from being um, Joe Wicks? Yeah, so I'm, I'm in a local, uh, quite a large secondary school, and um, it's kind of moved away from the Joe Wicks, even though oh, really? there's a little bit of a practical, yeah, practical aspect. It's more turned uh, theory-based now, so they're learning a lot about um, sport, uh, exercise, fitness, training, yeah. um, the body. Uh, so that, that's a big part, and that's um, remotely uh, every hour of the day. And oh. I'm also uh, in charge of um, sending off all the university applications as well for the students oh. applying to university. Uh, which is a huge job right now because they're so confused about exams. And um, if I could ask you to pray for someone, it would actually be the students that I'm involved with with regards to safeguarding uh, their engagement and um, the difficulties they are having at home wow. because of obviously accessing uh, work remotely is difficult for them. Um, they may be obviously of low income families um, and there's more going in as well or going on with regards to their mental health. So, um, wow. fingers, in, fingers in a few pies but um, you know it does give you or open your eyes to everything that's going on from a parent and a teacher point of view but I, I, I want to say like from all the staff and all the teachers how hard they're working but that just goes hand in hand with yeah. the parents the parents they're really working equally as hard to homeschool um, and working together is just gonna I think to be honest you help us through this and you've got a young family as well are you educating your kids as well during this time Gareth yeah, so um, I, I, was, I was in school today as part of uh, safeguarding. And um, while I'm there in my office, I have Ollie, my son, my eight-year-old son. He's on Zoom with me and I'm going through masks with him as well as looking after oh, some, um, <laughs> some uh, key worker children in school. But uh, it's exciting. Oh. It's busy. 
And uh, I, I think all together we'll make our way through this and come out the other end. Yeah. Better. I think many, many parents are learning things they never learned at school. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> from their own kids. And Jill, what about you? Tell us what, what you're doing and how you're doing. Um, well, I'm teaching mainly from home at the moment, and uh, which is proving very challenging in as much that normally I'd have, have a classroom surrounded. And you're a music teacher. Precisely, yeah. Uh, we'd be, be using percussion instruments and keyboards and guitars and what have you. So trying to come up with creative ways to teach the curriculum and having to just completely revamp that and rewrite it. Wow. It's been a challenge, but yeah. we are, I'm very lucky that I'm in a great secondary school. We introduced the whole Chromebook and Google Classroom thing years ago. So yeah. we, we were well set up for that. And uh, yeah, having to learn lots of new music software. If you have a lot going on in your life, don't you? There's just like, it's not just the classroom time. You shared beforehand when we were chatting, just the amount of preparation you're putting as well. So this is 24-7. In a, in a really dark time. It's very, very difficult. So how can we pray for you? Each one of you just love in. I mean, Gareth has already mentioned about some some prayer requests, but just for the for you you ladies, you know, any particular things you value prayer for at the moment? Those of us teachers who are going into school, especially, you know, in primary, mm. for protection. Yep, definitely. Virus that as far as I'm aware, there's still no testing for us. Um, we go in and with little ones you cannot socially distance from them no. you try lots of things so really just protection for for the staff uh, who are in school that I think is a big prayer for the uh, uh, students who are vulnerable and they're suffering from uncertainty because um, they don't know what's going to happen with exams that sure. that in particular and just for the the general sense of tiredness that a number of people both students and and staff are feeling that yeah. um awesome. we have some res resilience really thank you and jill what about you yeah i echo what everybody said about those pupils who may or may not be engaging um because if they do engage then we can really support them and help them out but if, if we don't hear from them, they don't communicate. That's really, really worrying. And um, I just think about balancing the workload. Uh, that can be very overwhelming at times. Mm. Let's pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for what we've talked about. And we just simply offer this moment in history and we offer our schools, uh, the children, young people, the parents and the teachers. Uh, to you, uh, both in our own communities and in our nation. And we do pray that you would be right at the centre of these of this moment. And I pray for these teachers and I pray for other teachers in our church as well and locally that you would give them peace, you give them energy and you'd give them uh, comfort as they uh, walk forward. So thank you for this time. And I just pray your blessing upon uh, our education system in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Dear God, our father in heaven, thank you so much for your love. You love us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, to earth to save us and free us from our sin. God, we come to you with things that break our hearts and we come to you with heavy baggage in our souls. First, I pray for our country. Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You know the trajectory of this virus and you know the impact it brings to mankind. For many of us, this is a particularly difficult time. Brief winter, a full lockdown, new variants, that brings further uncertainties to the already, already very confusing situation. God, I pray for leaderships in our government. I also pray for the responsiveness and decisiveness of the leaders among different nations so that the leaders can make good use of the wisdom and authorities you have given them to get ahead of this pandemic. Lord, please have mercy of upon every one of us in Barnet. Many families with young children 
with parents working from home are struggling. Key workers serving the community are facing real threats and new challenges every day. Young people who need schools or occupation are lost. People who are shielding or living alone need their voices to be heard. God, please strengthen our hearts when we feel weak and restore our souls with peace and clarity when we feel lost and discouraged. Lastly, I pray for our church. Father, thank you for gathering us together to be brother and sister in your family. I prayed for the Holy Spirit to come and live with us every day, every minute, every second, bringing us an inner growth of joy and peace with whatever we do, so that we can look out for one another and beyond. Father, thank you also for giving us great leaders in Christ Church Barnett. They are the brilliant captains of our ship navigating this very stormy sea at the moment. I pray for their health and total protection by you. For you are the living God who defeated temptation from Satan and conquered the cave. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hello, my name is Ruth. And I'm Alan. We did the Alpha course last year at Christchurch Barnet, and it was a quite literally a godsend. Um, we <laughs> wanted to find out more from a back to basics point of view. I felt, yeah. and I think that there, there is a heck of a lot. I feel I learned. Uh, it's a case of you know you could just talk, yeah, or have really difficult questions or questions yes. which you just yeah. mm -hmm. not so much difficult questions, but questions which we all struggle with, like why yeah. suffering? Why does God allow things? And, yeah. And and there was no taboo subject. Everybody just shared and puzzled, tried to work out answers, and accepted that we didn't always have all the answers. Yeah, it was very, very respectful, mm. and we yeah we, we just thoroughly enjoyed the whole experience. Yes. Nobody tried to pigeonhole anybody mm. or, or or try and make somebody be something that mm. it was just sit round, chat, and share. And it didn't feel uncomfortable at all. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, loved it. Good. Absolutely loved. It. Hi everyone, my name is Mali. Uh, I went on the Alpha course and um, I found Alpha helpful because it has helped me to know God more. I had already had encounters with Jesus before, but Alpha helped me to make sense of who Jesus is and how I can know him more. And the uh, church is a really great help. Alpha for me was an opportunity to explore the meaning of life and the Christian faith. And that's why I would recommend it to anyone. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Mandy. I was already attending Christchurch a good few years before I did the Alpha course, but I'm just so glad that I did it. Um, for me, it really cemented my beliefs and um, really helped with my understanding of Christianity. And um, that was through all the questions and the real open, honest discussions that took place on a weekly basis. Um, it just really confirmed everything for me, so much so that I was baptised a few months after the course finished. Um, I would definitely recommend Alpha. It's just really nice being part of um, a lovely group, many at different stages of their journey, whether that be just starting out, looking for somewhere to start, um, those that have been attending church many years, looking for confirmation or refreshment, um, or those that just feel curious, I would say definitely go along, it's lots of fun, it's not at all scary, and enjoy. Hi, I'm Natalie, I'm from Christchurch Barnet. I recently joined the Alpha course last year um, after finding faith through lockdown. Uh, me and my husband both joined. We thoroughly enjoyed it as there was other new Christians, there was Christians that have been there for a longer period of time. Um, and everyone was able to kind of come together in an intimate group and have open discussions and any questions that we had were answered and um, it was very interesting to find out a lot of things that obviously I previously didn't know about. Um, it definitely drew me close, closer to Jesus to find more out about him 
um, and just gave me that comfort to know that there is other people out there that um, share the same faith as you and you can talk about it. It was quite a small intimate group uh, which I find even better because then you can have more of a personal uh, conversation about things. Um, and Andy and James who run it were absolutely amazing. They made it so fun and enjoyable and um, looking forward to doing any more further courses with them, definitely. So I definitely recommend it. Hello. My name's Roland and I recently did the Alpha course. I've always had a number of burning questions about the God of religion and I was really surprised that on the course we were encouraged to ask them openly and freely. Awkward questions perhaps like, um, if there is an all-powerful God then why does he let horrible things happen? I didn't get an answer to all of my questions but I got an answer to quite a few of them. There are still many things I don't understand but I started on a journey and I would thoroughly recommend the Alpha Course to anybody who has an interest in the church and would just delight to learn more. You have absolutely nothing to lose, um, particularly during lockdown, and maybe plenty to gain. It seems to be a great way to start the new year. Hi, I'm Andy. I did Alpha about eight years ago and it completely changed my life. I was filled with the Holy Spirit during the away day and that's where my relationship with Jesus really started. Since then, my life's been different. Not always easy, but a lot richer. Everything makes a lot more sense now. It took me a while to get around to doing Alpha, and I had my doubts beforehand, but I really needn't have worried. I was made very welcome on the course, and I really like the format. You watch a video, you chat about it, and there's an opportunity to ask loads of questions. And I really enjoyed discussing some of life's most fundamental questions with a group of people who are exploring just like me. I recommend Alpha to anybody who's not done it. There's no downside, there's no pressure, and there's no expectation but it's a great opportunity that could completely change your life. So why not give it a go? Hi everyone, my name's Gareth and I recently took part in an Alpha course. The course was online and it involved many people, uh, some at the same stage as me in their faith and uh, others that were further down the line. And uh, it was just a wonderful opportunity to sit and talk and discuss, uh, prompted by obviously what an Alpha course is about. But um, I certainly came away from every session wanting to know more, explore more. Many of my questions were answered, some weren't, but again, that just set me on a path to really now be excited and discover more about where I want to go with my faith. And uh, if you get the opportunity to do the course, I highly recommend it. So uh, good luck and uh, take care. And there has never been a better time to explore the big questions of life and the Christian faith. And Alpha Online gives you the most perfect place to do that in the comfort of your own living room. Alpha Online is a really fun, informal, relaxing space for you just to be yourself and to say what you really think. There's no judgment and no question is too stupid. We are starting this new course on Thursday, the 21st of January. It's gonna run for 10 Thursday nights. We would love you to join us. And if you could go over to the Christchurch Barnet website and sign up, then that would be fantastic. The reading is taken from Mark chapter one, verses one to 13 beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt round his waist. And he ate locusts and ate wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. 
At that time, Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan he was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. Well, good morning and welcome to an exciting new series that we are starting up until Easter on Mark's Gospel. If you want to turn to Mark, then please do. Uh, that would be really great. Um, to support you in this over the next few weeks, uh, we've got a few things that we, uh, we're excited about. One is you're going to get a little package through your door, which is going to have one of these little Mark's Gospels in it. And uh, in those, uh, in, together with that, there'll be some other information of things happening in the life of the church. Secondly, the day-by-day -day devotional on Church Suite is going to be following Mark, a chance to apply that to literally to every day of our lives. And then also the connect groups are going to be working through uh, what Mark can mean for their lives. If you're in a connect group, I just encourage you to engage with them. They'll mainly be on Zoom this term. Uh, and if you're not in a connect group, I think it's really important that you try and join one uh, because they're a great way to actually be a part of CCB itself. Let's just pray as we begin. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to gather here this morning again. Uh, it's not the, the best place we want to be because we want to be together, uh, uh, in gathered together physically. But as we meet, thank you that your word is timeless. Thank you that it's relevant. And I pray you would take my words and use it in each one of our lives for your glory. Amen. A couple of days ago, I got a phone call out of the blue from a, a senior church leader who hadn't phoned me for a time. And he just said this, his first line really, he said, look, Andy, I'm phoning on the off chance. How are you really doing? I pause for a moment. And that's a really powerful question, isn't it? How are you really doing? Because at the moment, it's a really strange time, isn't it? I feel there's a sense of like suspended animation uh, going on. We're, we're caught between the short termness of literally every day getting through it or every week or, you know, it's hard to imagine what's going to happen in the next week or so, and the long-term implications of, of when this might end, or, and, and uh, you know, in the context of our work and in terms of church even, what's the long-term things to be aiming for? When will it end? And chatting with Mary about things at the end of that day after the phone call, and she used a term which really struck me. I thought it might be actually a word for us, which is, it feels like we're just waiting. And I jotted down some things uh, the next morning, really, about what are the things that uh, waiting's all about and it might be you know things like waiting in the queue for the post office uh, whether it's open or not um, for quarantine to end you might be waiting in the midst of isolation at the moment for a check to arrive just to pay the bills and keep uh, the, the, the 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 wolves away uh, waiting for the, the food bank to open just so you can get some food into your family into your life for the rubbish weather to end, waiting for days of homeschooling to come to an end, how we think teachers are incredible at this time. Maybe you're waiting for a, a hug from a loved one or that baby that's been inside you for the last nine months of this pandemic or for that person that you love to recognise that you love them. For the end of school, for what is university all about, the waiting, maybe waiting for a vaccine to be put in your arm, for me waiting to worship together in person, just waiting for an end to this carnage. We are all waiting, I suppose above all things, for good news. Most of my life there have been two types of news, bad news and good news. Sometimes there was no news, but as the wise wag would say, no news is good news. Of course, in recent years, there's been another news that's come to the fore, which is this word used by uh, soon-to-be ex-presidents, it's fake news. 
Gone are the days when news was a trustworthy thing that we would understand. Gone are the days when we would even trust the good old auntie BBC to get things right. We don't know what good, bad or fake news is. And social media and the internet and information overload has seems to have confused us even more. We live uh, within the context of people having to put out fact checks, not fact checks, fact checks, to find out whether something is true. For we live, as someone said, in a post-truth society, as the English dictionary defines it, is post-truth is a situation in which people are more likely to accept an argument based on their emotions and beliefs rather than one based on facts. And so when we talk about good news in relation to the Bible, in relation to Jesus, we need to be clear and sure about the truth of what those things mean. It cannot be based purely on emotions because real truth is really important and because sincerity is not enough. You know, history is littered with sincere, passionate people that are wrong and the implications of their sincerity have been devastating and of course carnage literally and genocide for many, many people. And that's why question mark is what we're describing this. We are going to grapple with this gospel together to discover the most important truth in the world, which is who is this Jesus? And if he is true, if he is real, then it's the most important truth. And that truth will truly set us free, as it says elsewhere in the Bible. You see, Israel was in a place of waiting when Mark's gospel came on the scene. The context was it was an oppressed people, a dark people in a difficult place. They had been waiting centuries and centuries for the one. They'd been waiting for the breakthrough. They'd been waiting for the one that was to come and save them. And this is the context in Mark. If you look right at the beginning, Mark 1 verse 1, he says this, the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. Good, the Greek word you, and angelion message, the good message. And Mark here, above all things, states here, I just want to give you good news. It's like he's saying, in the midst of the waiting, in the midst of the place where we are, I've got good news for you. Just like when we had our first child, Rebecca, we couldn't wait to tell people straight away about the good news. Didn't have mobile phones. Managed to line up with the rest of the, 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 the dads in front of the phone. And when we eventually got on the phone, we were straight away onto the mothers. And before we knew it, that good news had gone out all over the place. When good news comes, you can't not tell everybody about it. And Mark here cuts straight to the chase, straight to the heart of things. Unlike Matthew and Luke, no nativity stories here, no Jesus is a boy. He's an excited kid, this Mark, saying, I've found it. I've discovered it. It's like I've, I've been out with my metal detector and I found this incredible coin. I found this truth and it is good news. The wait is over. Who is this Mark? Well, commonly called John Mark in the Bible. He pops up in different ways in the Bible. But he is someone who has met the eyewitnesses to the truth. In Acts 12, it says his mum had a house in Jerusalem where the early church used to gather. His cousin was Barnabas. He accompanied Paul on a missionary journey. He wasn't a disciple himself, but he was close to probably one of the key eyewitnesses you could possibly have to anything, Simon Peter. The one who knew Jesus. The one who was close to Jesus. And there's a sense of Peter in the style and the way that it's communicated. He accepted Mark is one of the earliest Gospels, literally written 15, 20 years after Jesus died. A time of persecution, time of pressure. Uh, time was short for many people. And in this short, punchy Gospel, where he uses the word immediately about 30 times, it's full of action. And effectively, Mark's saying, you know what, I've fallen in love. Just like when you've fallen in love, you tell people the facts, the truths. You often rush your way through it. But he states here, I've met the one. The one who can make sense of life. The one who with a hope and a future. And he's saying, come on in. Come closer. I'm going to tell you about this one. So, this is good news. Who is the good news? That's a really important statement that he makes right at the beginning. Good news 
as Mark talks about it, it's not about a philosophy. It's not about an idea. It's not about a political statement. It's about a person. This person is, as he says, Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus, pretty common name in those days, pretty common on Manchester City's uh, South American uh, team sheet. It was a common name. It meant Yeshua or Joshua, which means Yahweh saves. It was the, the, the name given by Gabriel to Joseph and Mary, for he will be called Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. And what Mark is saying here is he was a real person. He lived. The evidence is that Jesus was a real person. Most people would believe that. If they might not believe Jesus is who he claimed to be, they believe he lived. And Mark's saying the physical nature is he is here. He has entered in. He has become part of what we're he's saying. God has come. He's not distant. He's come and he's lived as a person. But he is not just Jesus, a person like any of the other Jesuses around. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ as it says in Greek. Now, Christ was like a, a surname, but not Joseph and Mary. They weren't called Mr. and Mrs. Christ. And, and Jesus' brother James wasn't called James Christ. What it is here is a title, a unique title. It means anointed one. It means the one. The one word used here is only used for uh, uh, prophets and priests and kings in the Old Testament. But it's super significant here because Mark is proclaiming he is all those things, prophet, priest and king. And in addition, he's Jesus, the Messiah, the one who has come to break the waiting. But he is the son of God. And the whole of this gospel unpacks truth about him being deity. He's not just a person, Mark is saying. He is the Son of God. He's going to be shown, as I say in these next few words and these next few pages, he's going to show that he forgives sin, which only God can do. He heals the sick. He talks of relationship with God that has never been known before. He is by very nature, as Paul would say, God. As the Hebrew writer says, he is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. And what he wonderfully does here, he backs it up with, uh, with, with the fact that Jesus has been born in the context of God's love story for the world. The 500 prophecies that are proven shown by Jesus, including where he was born and how he was going to die, those things. And part of that, he says here in verses 3 and 4, he says, from Malachi, he says, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. And then from Isaiah, he says, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And who is this person? who he's talking about here. The preparation for a person that has been predicted hundreds of years before is this person, John the Baptist, his cousin, the messenger who was to show us. So who is the good news? Secondly, why is it good news? John is the one who expresses this here. Here he is, this John the Baptist, incredible figure, I love him, packed with protein, well, locusts and wild honey preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And we just read that, we think, baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Well, that's what they used to do. They didn't. That was what is so remarkable there is because Jews from all over, Jerusalem and Judea, are coming to get baptised. And the reason it's crazy is because at that time, Jews didn't get baptised for repentance. They would practise ritual cleaning. They would do something religious by being covered with water in the Jordan. But there was something here that was going on that was unique. Only Gentiles who converted to Judaism would get baptised in this way. And what John is saying as the Jews come together, the people of Jerusalem come out to him, he is saying blatantly, there's a new thing coming. The waiting is over. That our relationship with God is not based on being religious or doing those things. Our relationship with God is based on repenting and trusting in a God and being born again. And it also helps us to recognise this back to repentance. Why Jesus was baptised. I don't know whether you ever thought about that question. For he is without sin. He didn't need to be uh, baptised in this way. But there are two reasons why it's important he's baptized. Firstly, it sets an example to us. He was baptized to show us the fulfillment of 
all righteousness, it says in Matthew 3. But the second is baptism is not an initiation, it's a coronation. Because what we see in this beautiful, beautiful moment here where he is baptised, this wonderful moment where it says he goes into the water, baptised by John. He came out of the water. Immediately he saw the heavens being torn open, the spirit descending on him like a dove and a voice from heaven. You are my beloved son in who I'm well pleased. This beautiful coming together of God as father speaking and saying, you're my son who comes out of the water and you are to receive the Holy Spirit expressed in a dove. A significant moment as the heavens are torn open and God reveals himself right into the heart of the earth. But also a picture of one day. Three years on, Jesus, as he hung on a cross and died, the temple curtains were torn apart, it says, so that we could come into relationship with him. What Mark is saying here, the anointed one, Jesus, son of God, is the one that will provide the way back to God. The one we've been waiting for, the one who, as John says, in humility, who will uh, I will just stoop and I will worship myself. That's what John says. He is the one that will bring you life and freedom and peace. Life will never be the same. Mark says, life has never been the same since Jesus revealed himself to me. And so the good news, he first, he says, is in the who and the why, in, the, in this Jesus, we can have life. And relationship with God. As C.S. Lewis said, the Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. It's good news. We are no longer orphans. We are no longer enslaved. We are no longer in bondage. We are children of the King. And as children of the King, we can change the world. For what is our response to be? And we see this in these verses here, where John is sharing about repentance and faith. What he's saying is, how are we to respond to the king who has come and broken our waiting? We are to say, Lord God, come into my life. I repent, I turn to follow you, and I trust you. This upside down, sound king, upside down kingdom is what we're going to be searching and exploring as we see this Jesus who unlocks the kingdom of God through uh, signs and wonders, through miracles, through teaching, through uh, his compassion, through his life. And he says to his followers, come and follow me. And that's what he says to us today, come and follow me. And we might be, as we're listening to this and watching this, it might be in, I think, three categories. One, it might be that we've never made that step to repent and believe and follow this Jesus. We've thought about it. We've kicked it around. We might even consider doing something like the Alpha Course and discovering more about the facts of it. But the reality is today may be the day for you to repent, which means to turn around, to metanoia, to go in the opposite direction to all that is around us, to turn away from sin, and trust in this Jesus. Today may be the day when you need to do that. And I'm going to give opportunity at the end for that. Second, it might just be that we have, we're in it. We're stuck. We're stuck in the midst of what is going on at the moment. It's like it's overwhelmed us. The sense of darkness is around us. The sense of, of sadness, of anxiety. It's hard to trust. It's like we're in, fascinatingly, we're in the wilderness that John spoke into. And Jesus went into. And Jesus uh, is right in the heart of where we are, which is for many of us a wilderness time. God feels distant. Fear is in our heart and has gripped us. And Jesus just simply says to us, I'm here. Turn around and realise that I'm here. Repent and trust me. And finally, the third group, I think, is some of us have become quite complacent. Uh, this has actually been a, a mixture. For some of us, we've got very comfortable in our spiritual walk. You know, we enjoy the Sundays when we watch and uh, from time to time and we dip in and out uh, to the whole God thing and, and, and actually just watching and seeing other people worship. We find ourselves becoming consumerist. Oh, I like the, the music today. I wasn't so sure about it today. Well, why did they do that? What's that all about? Oh, yeah. We become consumerist. We watch in. And for each one of us, I believe that this is a time, this time of waiting is a time when God is waiting for us to step up and to step in to his purposes. 
He's saying is, I'm, I'm not just your saviour. I want to be your Lord. Only the one that, that can truly show you the calling and destiny for your life. Press in, step in to that. Allow me to do that. Repent of your consumerist, comfortable attitude. Trust me, I've got great things in store for you. This is the gospel for our time. In the wilderness, in the uncertainty, in the hopelessness, in this time of waiting, in a world that is rushing by, where we just are called to get on with it, let's allow this waiting time. Joseph waited 13 years. Abraham waited 25 years. Moses waited 40 years. Jesus waited to this moment 30 years. And then he fulfilled his destiny. Destiny. If God wants you to wait, then you're in good company. And you know what? As I finally finish, this is an urgent message which we need to communicate to others. And I finish with this story on the 4th of July, 1854. Charlie Peace, a well-known criminal in London, was hanged. And at the hanging, the Anglican priest read these words. Those who die without Christ experience hell, which is the pain of forever dying without the release which death itself can bring. And when these chilling words were read, Charlie Peace stopped, looked in the face of the priest and said, do you believe that? Do you really believe that? And the priest, taken aback by this sort of verbal assault, stammered, oh, well, I suppose I do. Well, I don't, said Charlie. But if I did, I'd get down on my hands and knees and I'd crawl all over Great Britain, even if it were paved with pieces of broken glass, if I could rescue one person from what you just told me. Brothers and sisters, the waiting is over. The good news of Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, is at hand. And it's available for you. Are you going to allow his kingship to come in and fill your life? Or are you just going to wait for it to happen? We need to repent and turn to him. Knowing he is full of grace and love to receive us and take us on. Let's pray. And Lord, I do pray for those that maybe have not turned to you. I pray that now, at this moment, they would recognise their need of you. That the wall that is between them and God has been broken in Jesus. And if they repent and turn from their sin, you, Lord Jesus, will come into their lives because of what you did on the cross and you will give them life and freedom. Lord Jesus, if that is the case for anybody who's watching this, I pray that they would turn to you. Secondly, Lord, those that are worried and anxious, Lord, I pray that they would know your love and your care and your purposes. And finally, for those of us that just become a bit fat and a bit lazy and a bit stuck in complacency. Lord, I pray that as we read this gospel over the next few weeks, we will be entranced. We would engage afresh with your good news and we would know how we can share it. For people are heading for eternity without you and they need those of us that know this good news to share it with others. I pray that all these things for your glory in your name. Amen. Thank you. Dear Lord, we just really want to lift ourselves to you. Lord, it is such a difficult time for so many people at the moment. And we really need to just cling on to you in the storm. And we just thank you and praise you that you are our rock and our anchor when we are being buffeted about. And we just really pray that through these words and through everything that we hear this morning that you will lift us up and just reassure us that you are with us and that you will never ever let us go in your dear name amen, amen.
Okay, what a really great time we've had together today. I just want to leave us with a couple of notices, then I would love to pray for us and bless us. So first of all, this week we've got um, some prayer meetings being run by Churches Together for the Week of Christian Unity, which is this week. And many of these meetings are being led by our very own Janet McIntyre. So I'd love it if, if you could go on the Christchurch website um, go in the calendar there and click on that and it will give you all of the times and information on how to get the links for Zoom to join these prayer meetings led by Janet. Secondly, as you've already heard, we've got our Alpha Online starting soon, 21st of January, Thursday night. And this is just the most perfect opportunity to invite a friend or a relative in the comfort of their own living room to hear about and experience the goodness of Jesus. It's fun, it's light-hearted, it's brilliant. Um, and I just want to really encourage you to think, who could I invite this week? You know, it doesn't matter if they say no, but it is our responsibility to invite people. So if you could guide them to the Christchurch website and they can sign up on there, that would be great. Okay, I want to pray for us and I want to read us a little blessing out of Hebrews 13. Father, we thank you for today, but thank you so much that you say over each one of us, you are my beloved son or daughter. With you I am well pleased. Father, please let your love be amplified in our hearts this week and let us love you back. And please let us love others around us. Help us live holy lives for you this week. And I'll just read you this blessing out of Hebrews 13. I pray that the God of peace will give you every good thing that you need so that you can do what he wants. God raised from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, because of the blood of his death. His blood began the eternal agreement that God made with his people. I pray that God will do in us what pleases him through Jesus Christ and to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have a fantastic week and see you soon.